In today's video, I'll tell you all about GPT-4, why that's important, and how you can try it out completely for free. All right, let me give you a little bit of context. OpenAI is the company which invented ChatGPT. If you haven't used that yet, go to my playlist called ChatGPT. Up till now, ChatGPT was running on the model 3.5, which could only take text inputs. GPT-4, on the other hand, is a multimodal model. That means it can take both image and text inputs. It's going to still return a text output, though. Now, here's a good diagram to understand it. All the models 3 and below could only accept problems written in text and respond with a solution in text. GPT-4, on the other hand, is a multimodal model. That means it can accept different kinds of entries. Right now, they say that they can accept images and text. Audio and video might come along soon, though. So along with providing it a text-based question, you can provide a screenshot or a picture taken from your smartphone. This can greatly increase the variation of problems that it can solve. At this time, the only real way to access GPT-4 is to use the paid version of ChatGPT called ChatGPT+. Let's stick around till the end of this video because I'm going to do a GPT-4 demo completely for free and you can try it as well. Now, it has only been a few hours since GPT-4 has been released. And even with ChatGPT+, you are limited to using 100 messages only per day using GPT-4. And that actually is enough for people to create some amazing things with it. And I want to show you some of the things that people have done. For example, Pietro here created the entire game of Pong in 60 seconds in his first try using GPT-4 and this already running on the browser. Josh here found another cool use case where he provided a credit card transaction to GPT-4 and it identified the exact business, the date the transaction took place and the address of the business. Another use case is someone who created one-click lawsuits to sue robocallers for 1500 and it provided them a thousand word lawsuit written extremely well. The next one is actually mind-blowing. This was streamed live on video and I'll provide the link on my description as well. One of the OpenAI developers gave this rough sketch of a website idea and GPT-4 provided the entire code for that website all the way from JavaScript to CSS and the website was running on a browser in a few minutes. Another mind-blowing example is someone provided an Ethereum smart contract into GPT-4 and it found all the vulnerabilities in that contract. The potential here is limitless. I'll link this thread to my description below so you can track all the different kinds of things that people are trying out with ChatGPT. For today's video, I'll try out a small use case that ChatGPT 3.5 can't do as well, but GPT-4 passes with flying colors. The software I'm going to use today is called Poe. This is Quora's own AI chatbot. It was initially only available for iOS, but you can access it on the web browser as well. When you sign up in openpoe.com, you're going to see this window and there's a section with a lot of different kinds of chatbots together. I'm going to do a different video in the future exclusively about Poe. If you go to poe.com slash GPT-4, you can have a limited access to GPT-4. When I say limited, there is exactly one query that you can do every day. You can of course get a paid version and do more, but for today's video, I think one is enough. All right, so I have this long article about mental health. It explains all about what mental health is, what are the different kinds of disorders, some statistics about mental health problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to request GPT-4 to summarize this article to me in a few sentences. However, I'm pretty sure ChatGPT 3.5 can do that as well. How about make it a bit harder? So I'm going to say summarize in a few sentences with all words starting in S. So what I'm expecting it to do is to summarize this entire article, which is pretty long, and I want my summary in a few sentences and every single word of the sentence should start with an S. So I'm going to request GPT-4 to summarize this article for me in a few sentences. Let me actually remove this question just to know that it starts here. And I'm going to copy that, paste it right here. And now I have my article and I'm requesting it to summarize it to me in a few sentences with all words starting in S. I'm going to press enter. All right, it did a pretty good job. Every single word here starts with an S. Oh, wait a second. Actually, mental health here does not. And I'm not sure if that is because ChatGPT doesn't understand that I want my summary to have every single thing in S. Or maybe it's trying to tell me that this article is about mental health and it kept the M without changing it to an S. Hmm, not sure. So let's read the summary. So it says, succinctly summarizing, sturdy states surrounding sentiments, sensation, stances, signify mental health. Specialists support 
sufferers struggling since situations, societal settings, somatic states sway stability, sustaining serenity, secure satisfaction, strengthens society, so safeguarding sanity seems sensible. I think the summary is not bad at all. I'm not sure about this M here, but I think it did a pretty good job. During the demo, they actually tried the letter Q and that was much harder. But I think you got my point here. GPT-4 is quite capable at producing answers to fairly complex queries. So you're free to try this out. You're allowed one account per email. So every time you make a query, it resets for around 10 hours. So I can make my next query in around 9 hours something. But this is the daily free limit. But if you're okay paying for ChatGPT+, you can of course try out GPT-4 up to 100 messages a day. I want to mention one more thing that I found. So Bing Chat actually runs on GPT-4. So if you don't know what Bing Chat is or don't have access to it, go to my playlist here called Bing AI where I show you how to do that. You still don't really have the ability to use GPT-4 with image uploads. That means the multimodal model using images, but maybe that's going to be rolled out soon. So personally, I'm still taking my time with ChatGPT+, because I don't really have a real need for it yet. So I'm going to try out Bing with some complex queries to see if I can use the powers of GPT-4. But I think I gave you all the main info that's available about GPT-4 up till now. This was just released yesterday, so there's going to be a lot more developments. But I hope you got some value from this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to click like on this video and subscribe to my channel. Till the next video, thank you so much.